Welcome back. The 2027 presidential election is in just about three years, and political calculations have already begun within the main opposition parties. According to reports, three presidential candidates in the last elections, namely al Haji Atikwa Abubakar of the PDP, his Liberal Party counterpart, Mr. Peter Obi, and Rabiu Musa Kwankwaso of the New Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, have agreed to form a formidable party that will sack the ruling All Progressive Congress in 2027. The co-convener of the National Consultative Front, NC Front, Professor Pat Tommy, reiterated that this proposed merger of opposition parties to wrestle power from the All Progressives Congress in 2027 is not for machine politics, but for genuine service to the people. He added that the new party's name is yet to be revealed. Let's find out more this morning on Breakfast Central as we have joining us Professor Pat Utomi. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Good morning, morning Prof. Pleasure. Yes. Can you? Yes. So can you confirm? I think the first question is to confirm that you, you know, it's categorically, we're categorically sure that this merger is actually happening because there's been speculations about the mergers for the longest time, uh, if it was going to happen, if it wasn't happening. So are you sure, can you confirm to us that this merger between the three political parties is happening? Well, I, I think the narrative is completely wrong, and it is pushed by the media. I don't understand why. Uh, first of all, we are not talking merger of anything. We are not talking 2027. All the introduction was is actually completely wrong. We're, we're talking Nigeria, governing Nigeria, saving Nigeria, and approaches to how you do that vary. Now, one approach is to look very critically at why Nigeria is prostrate right now. Nigeria is prostrate. Anybody who doesn't accept that needs to see a psychiatrist. Why is Nigeria prostrate? In our view, Nigeria is prostrate because it has what we call political parties, which are really not political parties. It has machine politics that is coupled together by interested parties, majorly for the purpose of state capture and the use of the state for personal aggrandizement. And so the people feature so little in the calculations of the political class that you can see why progress in terms of the quality of life of the people is not there. Um, a real political party, first and foremost, is based on a set of ideas about how society should be organized. An ideation process, which results in what some people like to call ideology. But for me, ideology, the usage is old style, capitalist, uh, uh, socialist, and stuff like that. But in general, that's what it means you believe in certain things and so you join a group that believes in those things uh you can see as people go from party a to b and back in party a and then to c and back in a six seven times in the course of two three years that people don't think that there's any difference between a and b and so they do those things essentially as a matter of jockeying for personal advantage so the first thing that we're dealing with is creating a set of ideas about how society should be organized. When we agree that these are the ideas on how to organize society for the good of all, then we agree to values because values shape human progress. Anybody who says character does not matter doesn't know what he's talking about. I, I like to quote the motto of the school in a way which was taken away from billy graham they went wealth is lost nothing is lost when health is lost something is lost when character is lost all is lost so we identify a set of values that anybody who's going to be part of this must subscribe to and then we develop a national strategy and from a national strategy will flow corporate strategies for companies who flow all kinds of things. And this is how you build a nation. So we intend to do this because there are persons who have tried to build followerships that are on ground. We have started with talking to these persons 
and they include the three gentlemen that you have mentioned, but are not limited to them. Uh, they include, for example, the leadership of the ADC. They include the leadership of the labor movement outside of the Labour Party. And they include other social movements that if the Nigeria needs to be rescued. And when we then have this template in place and these people have subscribed, if we be, and we begin to use it to ensure that governance is better today. I mean, imagine that we had not started speaking up a few weeks ago, the way the government was running around with uh, uh, 50 motor car motor kids, with no regard for the people who are suffering, with all kinds of things, buying your cheese and stuff like that, it, they wouldn't have started checking themselves. So this is our first rule to ensure Nigeria is governed properly. In the course of our life as a political party, we'll be recruiting and socializing people into a certain way of running society. And then when an election comes al along, we will participate in those elections with those who have come through the process in the party. And that's when elections become a factor in what we're doing. But it is not about 2027, one boom, we're running towards 2027, not at all. Yeah, um, yeah, interesting, you know, way, you know, that you've described it. There's um, also been responses, you know, and of course, there's other things that I hope that we have time to talk about. But I want you to also, you know, um, um, answer the question, you know, what do you think Nigeria needs to be saved from? It's the same, you know, politicians, you know, that have run the affairs of the nation since 1999 and even prior. The APC, in its response, I, I did see a response by Felix Morka. Uh, saying that, you know, what uh, Professor Pato told me is talking about, you know, are delusions of grandeur, you know, as it is uh, stated here. Um, he says here, one can only infer that Professor Otomi might be posting uh, that his personal involvement in proposed alliance uh, will transmogify the same parties he has adjudged to be decadent and anti-people into bastions of political and economic li liberty for Nigerians. And that is an unmitigated delusion of grandeur. That's Felix Morka responding to, you know, the claim of a measure for 2027. So maybe he also got it wrong. But can be clear with us with what exactly you're trying to save Nigeria from. Um, these political parties and these politicians are pretty much one and the same. We cannot have new ideas all of a sudden um, between now and 2027. I don't know. So so what would your response be true. to that? It, it, yeah, it is not true that we, we're looking for new ideas. Ideas have always been there. The problem is that a few people have hijacked political parties for other purposes. And um, I mean, Felix Mocha used to run around my house. So I, I think that he should have enough sense for values that people have uh, to know that there are people who have always had these ideas and who have walked away when they think that uh, people who don't share those values have hijacked the idea. So I. I I don't even want to comment on stuff like that. You know, they have always been good Nigerians, but the ones who have seen political parties as ways to ganache power for their personal needs uh, have managed to bully the other so far. What we're hoping is that we can create institutional boundaries that will keep these people at bay and allow those uh, who are really committed to service to be able to uh, leave their imprimatur on the way political parties uh, um, are governed. Uh, Felix Mokai will know that both he and I were involved in the process of the APC choosing candidates. He will know that when, uh, for example, uh, Lawrence Onoja arrived at Saba to conduct primaries which all the leading APC members in Delta State, of which he is one, uh, uh, were present. Ibe Kachuku, then uh, Minister, uh, Manuel Duan, former governor, all of them gathered. I was able to show Lawrence Onoja that they violated about seven of the nine critical points for having those primaries. And Onoja simply said, look, 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 we are brothers, let's leave these matters. Of course. It, it, they, they had constructed something premeditated against the rule of law, against everything. 
Who can know these things? And, and so it's not that people who have sincerity of purpose have not been around. They've been around. It's just that those who believe in bullying have muscled them for a long time. And how do you stop those kinds of things? By having institutional arrangements that set boundaries to conduct, which uh, prevent such kinds of people from getting their way. Uh, you did, uh, if I hear you correctly, at some point at the beginning of the show, you did mention about how the country is progressing. Well, is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. The country is prostrate. We know that. Okay, so uh, the average Nigerian will not agree with you because from all the indices... That Nigeria is prostrate? Oh, you just I, said it in Oh, the I thought you said prospering. This. Okay, now, now, now I... I no, prostrate. Okay. Lying okay. prostrate on the floor. Okay, I, I, had, I thought I had mis I misheard you. I thought you said prospering. No, 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 not at all. Okay, so how do we ensure that, you know, we... Whilst we're talking about the quality of leaders that we have, uh, what are the things that we need to do to prepare for 2027? The 2023 elections were highly disputed at the federal level, at several, you know, at the state level in several states. Let, 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 me, let me summarize. There were no elections in 2023. Let's be honest with ourselves. It was a fast, total and complete. I mean, we saw all the observers, the IRI. Uh, I used to accuse those observers of just coming to stamp things. But they went out of their way because it was so bad last year. They went out of their way to write these reports that totally indicted the elections. So there was no election in Nigeria in 2023. There was a civilian coup d'etat. And uh, sometimes when you have the jury and uh, de facto sovereignty issues and people kind of uh, back up for things to continue, but there was no, no, no election in 2023. Okay. So, um, I mean, of course, uh, there are some people that we argue with you, some will disagree with you, but that's uh, uh, subject to debate. Let's talk about 2027 now, moving that's forward. That's uh, freedom of opinion. Absolutely. People can hold whatever opinions they want. Absolutely. Like old mind, they can hold theirs. What can we do to ensure that we have uh, better systems, structures, and maybe a less uh, debated output at the 2027 elections? Well, I think... Uh, um, We've got to have stronger institutions. Unfortunately, we allow the politicians to destroy INEC. Uh, those who become part of institution building, and this is really a very serious thing. Um, if you look at all the scholarship on how society has made progress, one of the things that consensus is emerging around is that you need strong institutions for progress whether you are talking about historians like Neil Ferguson and the sweeping brush of how countries have risen and society has prospered, or you talk about economists uh, like Rajan uh, and Zingales and co, or you talk about um, uh, um, people like um, Douglas North and co, almost all the work on how society has made progress today you know, converges around the importance of institutions and how institutions push back on bad behavior and stuff like that. Uh, Professor Utomi, we seem to have lost, um, uh, you know, we're struggling with the connection with you uh, this morning. But of course, as we try to reconnect, um, the conversations, of course, are still centered around uh, the speculations of a merger. All right, Professor Tommy, welcome back. Again, a um, little struggle with the connection there with uh, Professor Pato Tommy. Um, if you can hear us, uh, kindly go on, uh, Professor Tommy. Yeah. Okay. I can hear. You. I can hear you. Yes. Right. Uh, uh, the 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 point um, um, that I was trying to make is that we are going to do our best to see how we can build strong institutions. Uh, when Nigerian politicians damage, uh, uh, um, you know, institutions like INEC, they don't realize what they are doing because they're hurting Nigeria permanently. It's not a matter of getting your, your own advantage right now. Where you don't have strong institutions, uh, generations will suffer for it. We're talking about poverty capital of the world. It will just get worse and worse until anarchy consumes society. 
So all of us have a a a, a natural, uh, if you will, interest in letting our institutions get strengthened. How do you build strong institutions? A civil society. People in society say, look, INEC matters to us. We must have a strong uh, electoral commission. And if politicians are seen to try and spoil it, then there should be severe, very severe consequences for the politicians that try to make the electoral commission uh, 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 less effective than it should be. So, so, so that's what part of this idea of rethinking the political parties uh, is supposed to do for us. Yeah. If we build real political parties, then they will make for the kind of uh, engagement that will make INEC uh, work for everybody. Well, but I when don't, people I think oh, I don't. it's about fleeing your way to power, you damage the prospects of society for good. Yeah, I mean, so, so I don't know, you know, about that. You know, you've mentioned, you know, the role of CSOs who also need to play with strengthening of institutions and some of all of that. But if you're in a society where the government in power itself hasn't seen the value in strong institutions, you know, hasn't, you know, of course, finds more uh, um, value in having strong individuals. In, in today's Nigeria, listen, Professor, Professor Otomi, We've seen stories of people thanking the president for not getting involved in their in their uh, Supreme Court case. Oh yes, I mean, oh yes, that is so unreal. That, that's I that's, that's where we are. I said, goodness, we are sunk as a society. <laughs> I think the man said, oh, I thank the president for not for not asking the Supreme Court to rule this way. And I said, this is it. We don't belong here. Maybe exactly. We should be recognized. Maybe we don't have the mind for uh, uh, um, democracy and. You know, I mean, that statement was unbelievable. Yeah, and, and that's but exactly what I'm referring class. to. That's exactly what I'm referring to as what our reality is. Um, it, it, I don't know that the current government, you know, with the power that it... And it, let's get a dictator. It, let's get a benevolent dictator to well, things, if that is our reality. Well, well, the point well, well, well maybe, all these maybe not. Yeah. In the name of democracy. Yeah, you know, but this is what I'm, I'm, I'm driving at, right? If this is what the current reality is, or seems to be like in today's Nigeria, um, there's people who have even accused the current administration of, of state capture um, in, in one way or the other. By 2027, we're seeing a government that would, you know, like to retain power. It will do all, all it can to ensure that it retains power. You, of course, have just said that 2023 elections didn't hold, like from, from according to your standards, there were no elections in 2023. Um, in 2027, it means that, you know, it's either going to be pretty much the same thing with the institutions of government not being strong but, but enough see, to, to be independent. So, so... Invariably... invariably yes, go ahead. Stops. You know where I'm driving at. It's invariably, society, society feels the effect and it has to stop. Look, uh, or you find one or two people who are really, uh, um, what do I call them, uh, and passionate... Uh, patriots who risk everything to stop it. Paul Kagame, who put on fatigues and went into the bush, is an example of how you stop this kind of thing. Um, you have a collapse sometimes and the road to Somalia, and you don't have a choice. You know, many years ago, um, the uh, uh, um, Reverend Adifarasi, not not Reverend Paul, Reverend Wally, at the 60th birthday, uh, amongst the speakers were uh, uh, Yemi Oshimbaju, who became vice president later, and myself. And think it's amazing that both of us gave speeches that were really similar, taking examples from two different countries. In the case of uh, Professor Shimbaju, uh, he talked about Somalia and how he was in this UN committee to help Somalia set up a new constitution. And uh, he arrived there and he went to a refugee camp. He saw some gaunt looking man holding a bowl, you know, uh, uh, looking for rice to eat. And something, something about the man seemed familiar. And he kept wondering what is the. And it turned out the man used to be, I think, Chief Justice of the Federation, who he had met in previous. Uh, uh, assignments at the UN and stuff like that. That's what he had been reduced to by oh. this kind of politics. Uh, and I, I told the story from Liberia, you know, 
again, a, a schoolmate of mine who, who became Nigeria, uh, Liberia's ambassador to, to, to Nigeria, a Serenos for when grad school together in the United States. And how he said to me, you Nigerians are amazing, you know. You're spending billions of, 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 of your money and uh, uh, um, pouring Nigerian blood like water down the streets of uh, 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 Liberia. And we are very grateful. But we will not understand you are doing the same very things that brought us to where we are. Right. Can't you learn from us? Um, Professor, so, Professor mm -hmm. we've uh, run out of time, unfortunately, because we have to end this show. But we thank you so much for all the points that you've highlighted so clearly. And we do hope that we have a, a better testimony and that by the end of 2027, you will be able to be of the opinion that an election was held. All right. Uh, since the network has disconnected. Thank you very much, Prof. Yeah, uh, for joining. All right. Thank you very much. Well, thanks for stopping by.